Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. Today I'll be doing a review on the Solar 6 Plus, which is a daylight LED Fresnel made by Light Panels. And I'll be comparing it to an old school 575 HMI Fresnel. Now I'll be comparing these two units because they are a similar size physically. They are both daylight units and they are both Fresnels. But the other reason I'll be checking them out is the 575 HMI has a glass lens. The LED unit has an acrylic lens. So let's uh, have a look and see if the myth is true that a glass lens can outperform an acrylic lens. All right, so let's start off the review by talking about the price. And if you're looking to be an owner operator, this will probably scare you off. Uh, if you're an Australian, by the time you pay your exchange rate, your import duties and your freight, you're looking at about 3,000 Aussie dollars per unit. That's a staggering amount of money for an LED Fresnel. Now, when you consider that sort of price tag, you can buy units that are bicolor. If you do some hunting around, you will even find some RGBW units um, manufactured in China, which are pretty good quality units for about the same amount of money. Now, this unit has advantages over those units. Number one advantage is this unit is actually quite small. A lot of the bicolor lights out there that are designed for field work are about this big and weigh about 15 kilograms. This unit weighs in at 5.6 kilograms. Now, the other thing I really liked about this unit is its power draw. It only draws 104 watts in total, which means I can run it off a V-Lock battery for hours without a problem. So that's come in very handy for me, particularly in environments where we have safety concerns. We can't run cables along the ground, such as a shopping center. But I found I use these a heck of a lot as backlights. Um, I can get a uh, in daylight environment, I can swing this in as a backlight on set really, really quickly. Whereas if I was running a HMI, I'd have to run a power cable, a ballast, a head lead. Um, this thing, I can just rock it straight in and turn it on if it's running off a battery. So again, very, very lightweight. I can use it as a satellite unit, carry it around the set, no problem at all. Runs off the of V-Lock battery. Um, yeah, it's really, really tick some boxes that I needed ticked. Now, one more thing I'd like to point out about the ease of use of this unit is because it's only pulling 104 watts of power draw, it only needs a small transformer. The transformer is so small that it is actually clipped into the bottom of the unit. So you don't have a separate transformer that you've got to wire up. If you want to run this thing off mains power, you just plug the power cable in. If you want to run it off batteries, you just plug in your battery cable and you're off and going. Let's do a quick overview of the unit. Okay, so build quality wise, it's quite well constructed. It doesn't look it when you first uh, take a glance at it because it looks like it's uh, entirely made of plastic. However, the centre core here is actually made of metal. It's just coated in plastic. And I've got to say, after one year of being in a, uh, in a gaffer van and, and being out on rentals, uh, plastic coated metal holds up way better than painted metal. So it'll continue looking good into the future. Other things I like about it are, are, are things that a lot of companies overlook. Very, very simple things, like um, having lock offs that are a decent size. So they fit into your hand very nicely and lock very positively. The lock-offs are really good. It's got a lock-off on both sides, but you only really need one. So it's a testament to the fact that these guys have been making lights for a, quite a bit of time. Now, other things I like about the unit is the, um, the barn door lock or, or the uh, barn door release. It's very, very simple thread. Okay, very easy to use. Now, one thing that did concern me was the uh, barn doors, uh, the construction of the barn door holder. So I looked at this and thought, well, this looks like really, really cheap plastic. But uh, looking at how well it's holding up, it must be um, uh, some high strength plastic or maybe even a, a carbon fiber or something like that. Um, a lot of other reviewers have said that they don't like the barn doors. They've uh, criticized the barn doors. And what uh, a lot of them have criticized is that the barn doors don't stay in place. Now, mine stay in place. And there's a, a very, very simple reason that mine stay in place. And that's because I took the one minute to read the instruction manual. The thing that's on page one of the instruction manual is to tighten the screws because they're loose for transit. Now, back to this lock off, it's got a very nice uh, gauge thread. 
So look at that, very simple to very simple to lock off. I've had a lot of lights in the past where they're spring loaded and they just come apart on you. Okay, the other thing I like about the barn doors is these guys have supplied eight leaf barn doors, uh, which is usually an optional extra with a lot of other brands. So let's have a look at the back of the unit now. Now on the back of the unit, the controls are very simple to operate, very big knobs that have a good positive feel to them. So the top knob is your dimmer knob. So one thing that's really good about this unit is look how smooth the dimmer is on it. Now a lot of people, uh, when they first see these, they see the fan in the back and they panic about how loud that fan's gonna be. So I'm standing right next to the unit wearing a lapel, you're not really hearing it. And just to emphasize how quiet that fan is. Now the flood spot, same again, very easy to control. Very good positive feel to the knob. And another thing I really like about this unit is there's no computerized menu. So a lot of gaffers will be going, thank God for that. Um, you wanna run this thing off DMX, which you can. It is basically the push button to assign your channel. The only thing I don't like about this unit is it runs off, I think it's called Cat9 DMX cable or Cat9 cable. Um, the reason they've given for, for choosing this is it's way cheaper than um, your five pin XLR cable. However, that's pretty much not the case after you pay for an adapter. So let's plug it in and have a look at the DMX. So one thing that's um, really good about this unit compared to a lot of other units is that the DMX is very responsive to the dimmer. So you see there it's very, very smooth. A lot of, um, a lot of LEDs flicker when they're under, under DMX control. Now the other thing that's really cool with this is your flood spot control is controllable by DMX. Now one thing I forgot to mention with DMX is when you've got an active DMX signal coming in, the power light flickers to indicate that DMX is present. Now like a lot of LED Fresnels, this unit does have some fraying on the edge of the beams. So in case you're not seeing it too clearly, the fraying is from there to there, so that bit there, and the same on the other side. So there is a bit of color fraying. But unlike a lot of other LED lights, the color fraying isn't green or pink. It's actually just a, a drop in color temperature. So it's not really that noticeable on set. All right, one thing I forgot to mention is this has a 67 degree beam angle. Now that the light's off, you can see on the edge of the beam, you can see the color fraying. So it's a bit more clear. It's a bit more evident that it's there. Now, as I pan it around, you'll notice that there's no hot spots in the center of the beam. The beam is really quite even. There is, of course, a drop off on the sides of the beam, but the inner 80% is very, very, very even. Let's have a look at our barn door cuts. You see the barn door cuts are very, very crisp, as you'd expect from a real Fresnel. Very, very crisp indeed. Let's have a look at our shadow qualities. Let's have a look at the shadows when we chuck up a Kukularis. And now let's have a look at the spot, at the uh, flood spot capability of the unit. Now let's have a quick chat about some of the accessories you can get. So I've bought the, um, the hard gels kit for this unit. So basically the hard gels kit consists of um, basically your plastic gels. Um, we've got a um, eighth CTO, quarter CTO, half CTO and full CTO and an opal frost. Now with the CTOs, the uh, unit actually has enough color rendition that you still get very, very good color rendition even after you've gelled it. So, and these are very, very accurate. So after getting these, I've never um, had to clip a gel onto the front of this unit ever. So very, very accurate. And look, it's going to save you money in gels and they don't make a noise in the wind. Now the opal's quite good. So pop the opal in. It just takes the hard edge off your beam slashes. So um, as you can see there, it softens off the edge of the beam, but still gives you shape. So it's quite a good kit and worth the money. Now, like the vast majority of LED fixtures, this thing does not have an IP rating, so it's not weatherproof. So 
it's well worth investing in the rain jacket that they make. So I've got to give them a bit of a hat tip for having the intelligence to make a rain jacket. I just wish all the other manufacturers would make a rain jacket for theirs. I do have to say it is a bit of a pig to get on, so I'm going to cut, put this on and then show you the unit. Okay, so this is the rain jacket. It took about a minute and a half to get it on. So it'd be worth trying to get it on before it rains. So as you can see, the back is protected. Yeah, it's got plenty of ventilation. And the barn doors are on the outside of the jacket. Now I'd recommend if you do this, don't bother with the top latch because you can't put your gels in if you have the top latch. Now take the barn doors off and the front actually has a protective jacket there. So very, uh, very well thought out unit. It's definitely gonna protect it from the rain. Just be nice if it somehow went on in 30 seconds flat. All right, so I fired up a 575 HMI. Let's now do a comparison, compare the optical qualities of the two units. Let's compare the evenness of the beam in flood. This is the Solar 6 Plus. This is the 575 HMI Fresnel with the glass lens. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit less color fraying on the edges of the beam but there is definitely a hotspot in there where you can see the globe. Now I'm going to use the light stand here so we can check the continuity of shadow quality. It's one edge of the beam on the Solar 6 Plus to the other edge quite consistent shadow qualities. Let's compare that to the HMI. Okay, so that's on the edge of the beam. Back around the other way. Both of them very consistent shadow qualities. This is how both units compare with the barn doors boxed up. Okay, so what I've done here is try to create the finest slit I can with the barn doors. So this is as narrow a slit as I can create with either light with their barn doors. Okay, so we've got both units in full spot, so let's have a uh, closer look at it. As you can see here, the um, acrylic lens on the LED has a more uniformed, even beam with very clean edges. The HMI actually does have a tighter spot, but it's not a uniform beam. Now we're going to get to the technical part, and I'm going to spend about an hour to two hours getting readings. So all my measurements are taking at two and a half meters from the light. Unfortunately, I don't have a big enough workshop to go any further back. We're gonna take readings from the center of the beam and then compare that to a HMI. Then we'll take readings from the edge of the beam where the color fraying is and see what the color difference is. And then we'll take readings in full spot because if you've never used one of these units, you'll be surprised how much of a different beast they are when they're spotted up. Okay, so I've got a few results to talk over. Let's have a look at how the Solar 6 Plus went in terms of generating its whites. Now in flood, it was generating in the center of the beam, 5,991 degrees Kelvin. The color meter indicated that there was a bit of deviation from the Planckian curve. In fact, the deviation is minus 64 increments of adjustment. So in real world terms, if you wanted to adjust the light back to neutral white, you would need a one quarter plus green gel. However, I can tell you from experience in the year that I've owned these, don't bother, no one's ever gonna notice. Now on the fringe of the beam where the light appears to be a little bit warmer, the light came in at 5,344 degrees Kelvin. Now in spot, the Solar 6 Plus comes in at 5,811 degrees Kelvin. Now when dimmed, there was hardly any difference in color temperature or color rendering, so it's not worth talking about. Okay, so during the testing, you might have noticed that the HMI was appearing a bit blue. Now the HMI was actually reading 6,499 degrees Kelvin. Now personally, I think this is a bit high, but in the last year I've noticed that when I get new HMI globes, they tend to be around the 6,500 degree Kelvin mark 
which means I'm having to CTO them to get them back to about 5,600 degrees Kelvin. And that's the real reason I'd say that the Solar 6 Plus generates better whites. It'll be consistent over its lifetime and not at the mercy of globe stocks. Now let's talk about color rendering. Now the Solar 6 Plus had a TLCI score of 92.8. That's a really good score for an LED. The TM30 test indicates that a more realistic score would be 89.6. Now in comparison, the HMI had a TLCI score of 94.2. I'm extremely surprised by this. Small HMIs usually don't score that high, and that's probably because it's got a brand new globe in it. The globe's about 50 hours run in. The TM30 test indicates that a more realistic score would be 93%. Now let's have a look at the spectrums of both. This is the spectrum of the Solar 6 Plus, and this is the spectrum of the HMI. Now in terms of how the spectrums look, it doesn't really matter unless you're getting into some really heavy color grading. But as you can see from those two spectrums, the HMI has a lot more meat for the color grader to work with. Now let's talk about brightness. Now it might seem weird that I'm comparing a 575 HMI to a 104 watt LED light. Now the reason I'm doing this is because light panels when they released this light, in 2017 said that it was comparable to a 1200 HMI. Now in defense of that statement, they didn't say they were comparing the brightness, but let's have a look anyway at how this compares to a HMI, a 575 in this case, in terms of brightness. In flood, the Solar 6 Plus came in at 1,004 lux at 2.5 meters. In flood, the HMI came in at 2,598 lux. So in comparison to a 575 HMI, the Solar 6 Plus is roughly 37% the brightness, which would make it about a 212 watt HMI equivalent. Now the results for spot were amazing. The lens in the Solar 6 Plus magnified the light 10.7 times, giving it a 10,734 lux reading. The HMI in spot came in at 17,200 lux. So the HMI was still brighter in spot. However, when comparing the Solar 6 Plus in spot to a 575 HMI in spot, the Solar 6 Plus came in at 62% of the brightness, which would make it about a 356 watt HMI equivalent. That's quite impressive considering it only has a 104 watt power draw. Now I use the spot function on the Solar 6 Plus a heck of a lot. It's a more usable spot than you get out of the old school glass lens HMIs. Now factoring in how bright this unit is in spot, I would tend to rate it overall at about a 260 watt HMI equivalent. So in review, the Solar 6 Plus is the winner when it comes to optical quality. The Solar 6 Plus is also the winner when it comes to rendering whites. However, the 575 HMI is the winner when it comes to color rendition and is still the winner when it comes to intensity. I'm Andrew Locke, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gaffer and Gear. See you on set.